During my time as a photojournalist, I met many caring and fascinating people, people who were involved in breeding, raising and training animals of all kinds. One of these was a lady called Pat Dellar, who trained wild animals for starring roles in television and in film. Among her potential stars was Kiki, a seven-month-old bottle-fed baby elephant, who was allowed to explore her home as he pleased and enjoyed nothing better than having his back massaged with a vacuum cleaner. Pat always insisted Kiki had her feet wiped before being allowed to the kitchen when she came in from the garden. Pat Menagerie all seemed to get along well together as these pictures of her kitten playing confidently with a young lioness show. It was another of Pat's lion cubs, Lulu, who featured in a series of pictures with her one-year-old son, Nicky. Before taking these photographs, I had to arrange a suitable background this is an important aspect of successful animal photography and one which I'll be discussing in a moment. On this occasion, all I had to do was cover Pat's brightly coloured floral sofa with a black background material which I always carried as one of my standard props. Lulu, the lion cub, was placed on the sofa next to little Dicky, who was completely absorbed in drinking his bottle of milk. This soon caught Lulu's attention and the cub's successful bottle snatch left poor Nicky in a flood of tears. When shooting animal pictures, here are two practical suggestions and a word of caution. As with any subject, watch out for backgrounds since these could ruin an otherwise charming picture. Take for example the distracted background in this particular shot. While the subject itself, a small boy bottle feeding lion cubs, is certainly interesting, the highly decorated wallpaper behind them is an annoying distraction. The same applies, of course, when photographing animals out of doors. In these pictures, notice how the messy background distracts you from the dogs themselves. By switching from a 50mm lens to a 135mm lens, I was able to get in much closer and provide a much more pleasing shot of the black and white dog playing while also blurring the background. My second tip is to bear in mind that for many animal photographs, you don't always need a costly camera to get a great shot. During the 50s, Kodak sold a very simple box camera, the Brownie 620, which had a fixed focal length lens, an aperture of around f8, and a shutter speed of about 1 of a second. Although a very simple camera to use, the Brownie was capable of taking some fascinating pictures. Here, for example, is a photograph snapped with a Brownie 620 on Dartmoor. The two horses seem to have just one head between them. The photographer here, a housewife, sent the picture to my agency on spec and it was published finally in over 50 newspapers and magazines around the world. So just because you have a fairly cheap camera, don't think you're not capable of producing great photographs. The first camera I ever owned was called a Helena A1 and was given to me as a birthday present at the age of 12. This was a Hong Kong made twin lens reflex. It had gear coupled viewing and taking lens which meant that by focusing your subject on the screen you automatically focus the taking lens. The Helena had a two blade shutter, an aperture range of between f3.5 and f22 and a top speed of one hundredth of a second. Despite its simplicity, the Helena enabled me to take photographs that I sold to several local magazines and newspapers, like this one of a small girl bottle feeding a lamb.
Finally, a word of warning. When photographing animals, especially wild ones, do exercise great caution to avoid placing either yourself or the animal itself in any danger. However tame and domesticated the animal may appear, and this applies to farm animals as well as those in the wild, never forget that almost any animal will attack when feeding itself, or especially its young, under threat. No animal is ever entirely predictable. I found this out myself when approaching rather too close to these elephants while I was shooting a story about animal conservation. While I had to beat a hasty retreat, I certainly got off far more lightly than this Spanish bullfighter who was captured caught on the horns of a pain maddened bull and paying a heavy price for his job. In my next series of photos, I'll be revealing the way children were raised during the 60s and 70s, how they were treated at school, where corporal punishment was routine, and in some families where they were exposed to risks which today would horrify most parents and probably lead to prosecutions. If you'd like to see some more of my photographs, please go to www.thewayitwas.uk If you would like to purchase a copy of my book, The Way It Was, then please go to the same website and take a look at what it contains. If you lived through the 60s, it will bring back some memories. If you never lived through the 60s, you'll find a foreign country where they do things very different.